great. Thank you very much for coming to this iGaming Next panel. We are going to be talking about customer acquisition and probably some retention as well in the United States market. Uh, it's a very interesting market and there's a, there's a lot to, to cover. We're going to focus specifically on the customer acquisition and retention. Uh, I've got two excellent panelists with me. I've got uh, Dr. Uh, Layla Mintis and Adam Fisk, and we're all going to be uh, having a, a, a relatively general conversation about, uh, about what's happening in the U.S. So uh, just as a quick introduction, my name is Daniel Kostelski. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Chalkline Sports. Uh, we work on customer acquisition and, and retention tools. Uh, we've got a free-to-play platform that, that we license out to, to operators and to media companies. Uh, Layla, I'm just going to hand it over to you for a quick introduction. Yes, thank you, Daniel, and thanks for having me. So um, I'm the CEO of PlayUp um, US, so I'm leading the US operations, US strategy. We are the largest fantasy sports provider in Australia. Um, we also offer sports betting and horse racing and other very interesting products like esports betting and fantasy on esports, etc., in Australia. And we are on our way to get into the US. We are live in Colorado, going live in New Jersey very soon with sports betting and iGaming. And we have a lot of other markets secured and planning to take some of them live this year and a few others next year and over the next couple of years. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, Adam, would you like to give a little bit of background? Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Thanks again for, for having us. Um, yeah, um, I'm the CEO and co-founder of iRival Media. We're, a, um, I guess, a media and technology company specializing in the wagering industry and focusing um, majorly on, on the US market. Uh, we've recently launched um, our MVP product, Diamonds.com, um, which, um, which is our consumer-facing brand and have recently just actually made a small acquisition in the uh, in the fantasy space of a, of a brand that's been around for a little while called fakepigskin.com. So we're excited to bring those two brands together. Um, as you can probably tell, we're in Australia at the moment, um, not for the only reason being the pandemic, um, but we've got a team both here in, here in Melbourne and, and in the US. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for, for having us. Awesome! Hey, congratulations on that uh, acquisition. <laughs> there's a there's a lot of uh, uh, M and A that's happening in the in the in the U S. space. Um, that that being one of one of many. So well done. Yeah. I, I just real quickly, I, I would just like to, to, to maybe level set, uh, you know, there's 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 20, I think, 28 states now uh, that have legalized uh, sports betting. It's live in, in 21, 22 uh, states. Um, you know, mobile is a little bit less than that. Um, and what we're seeing right now, and, and, and certainly over the past couple of years since since PASPA was repealed on May 14th of, of 2018, is just there, there's a lot of a lot of marketing spend. Uh, if you live in a state, you know, I'm, I'm in Nashville, Tennessee. If you live in a state that that launches, um, you know, I, I was talking to some friends from Arizona here recently, and and it's just you get inundated by you know, by sports betting, um, you know, every, every single, you know, sports team is, is doing sponsorships. And, and I just wanted to get, you know, and I'm, I'm just going to ask, you know, Layla, you know, what, what are your thoughts about, you know, opening up a new state? How do you, how do you approach customer acquisition in, in, in maybe Colorado or, or how should people be looking at, at customer acquisition, um, you know, when, when these, when these new states open up? Yeah, as we have a state by state approach, approach in the US and every state has different regulations, um, we are really focused on um, user acquisition um, with a more local strategy. So we're looking for the right partnerships um, on a local level. We know that a lot of the bigger players in the US um, do media rate, um, partnerships where you have national wide distribution. Um, from my perspective, um, looking into the numbers, it hasn't really paid out too much yet. And that has probably many different reasons. But one, one reason might be that half of the states have legalized or a bit more than half of the states have legalized sports betting as of today. So it's too early for us to basically spend nationwide. So we focus on local markets to give you one example. In New Jersey, where we will be going live very soon with sports betting and iGaming, we have secured a partnership with the New Jersey Devils. So we are sponsoring. We have our in-ice logos there and other 
great branding in the in the arena, but then also we have baked into the deal uh, hand in hand working on acquiring customer um, because that's at the end of the day why we do deals like that. Um, if you see some of the major deals that's been put out there, I don't really see like a big um, user acquisition yet. Um, so it's not reflected in the numbers if you look into market share and deals been done. So our approach is more going local, looking for strategic partnerships, um, and basically um, spending where it makes sense for us. Yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 I think that you know, two years ago, three years ago, and 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 certainly if you look at the history of of some of the operators, um, you know, that come from the, the daily fantasy space, massive national campaigns, and I think that we're seeing a lot less of that. Um, in in the U.S., uh, just simply because there's so much marketing bleed, and if somebody is sitting in a state, you know, for instance, like Missouri, where it's hard to monetize them, you know, do I do I really care about you know conveying my my brand message to that person? Um, you know, I would much rather you know localize it um, and focus that time, energy, resource, and 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 marketing spend on on people that are in states where I can I can monetize them. Um, so I, I I tend to agree with you that 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 localization i think maybe less so you know as soon as paspa was repealed um i, th I think we're starting to see that that there's a there's a little more you know finer cuts with with their marketing dollars uh that than than maybe in the past well, what what are your thoughts adam on 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 you know state by state how, how are you as an affiliate approaching it you know what are the opportunities that you're seeing um you know on, on this on the state by state rollout I think firstly, um, just to touch on on the bigger operators, we still are seeing different approaches from from all of them. You know, FanDuel really big above the line spend um, national wide, but then going with I guess um, you know an influencer strategy right from you know Charles Barkley down to you know, TikTok platforms and things like that. You know, you've got Penn who uh, came in and invested in in Barstool, um, who. Barstool would probably say they're not spending any money on marketing, but they, you know, they 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 they, they obviously spent the money to acquire that audience. And then, you know, brands like yeah, Pointsbet, right. who, you know, might have these big, um, you know, media deals with an NBC or a, a NHL, for example. Um, but then they're also rolling out, um, you know, niche products or you know, uh, their points betting product, for example, as a as a point of difference as well. So there still is a very big range, I think, of different approaches there um, for an affiliate state to state there's not as many barriers um to entry albeit we still need to be licensed in every single state um to operate in that space um and i think the size of the market still plays a big part for us because you can't be everything to everyone definitely um so you need to find um you know um, segmentation whether it's locally um or for different teams or sports where you can actually get some cut through i think it's really important um, and, you know, to the point before around, you know, the, the percentage of the market that's, um, that's legal, it is, the challenge for us is, you know, and for a lot of affiliates driving a lot of organic traffic through SEO or maybe through um, social, you know, you, you can't monetize a lot of your traffic as well because they're coming in from states that aren't necessarily legal yet as well. So there are a couple of challenges there with that approach. Yeah, and and have you found licensing a, a a challenge for 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 the affiliates? I mean, I I do know that you know there's a lot of people in America that that have traffic, uh, they've got eyeballs. Um, you know, the question is is how do you monetize that from a you know into into either sports betting or i gaming? Like, what do you what, how have, how have you guys approached maybe just the the legalization? And then Layla, I'm going to come back to you and just talk about you know what are your guys' thoughts about affiliates as a as a medium for customer acquisition, Adam? Yeah, um, so we're we're legal, we're licensed, I should say, in um, in all online states uh, bar one. Uh, I won't say which one it is, but um, it, there was too cost prohibitive for the potential audience for us, so we had to make the sacrifice on on that one. Um, and obviously, Illinois with the changes to you know in person registration we're all rolling back has had some impact there as well. Um, but we you know we focused on um, on New Jersey and we built from there. And we continue to learn um, around um, different states that are delivering better customers or different types of customers. 
um, and around different events as well. It's you know whether it's a different sport or it's March Madness or something, we are seeing different um, customers or different states doing better um, around different events. Sure, sure. And Layla, how how do you all look at at uh, you know customer acquisition from a you know from an affiliate uh, channel? I, I think when we look at some of the deals that are are the the more recent m a deals you know action network being bought by by better collective better collective also you know bought uh, rotor grinders you know we're, we're starting to see the affiliates um you know really starting to consolidate maybe some of the local and regional and and then and the real uh you know, sports betting specific uh sites what, what are your thoughts about about that as a as a medium for for acquisition yeah so we see certainly a lot of m a activity across the sector with the payment processors with affiliates with sports betting operators so it's just like a crazy environment <laughs> uh, when you look at the valuations i know we have some of the audience are interested in investing into the us this all happens for a reason because the us will be the largest legal sports betting market in the world so uh, looking into some of the estimates that are out there they go up to 60 billion dollars in terms of value of that market we are halfway through um but there's more to come for sure so um we will see a lot of this activity keep keep going on and um i think from my perspective affiliates is a very very important piece of our business and of our user acquisition uh, strategy. We work with the biggest affiliates in the market already. We are just about to kind of like get it get it rolled out. Um, obviously, working with Adam and his um, company, but then also um, another piece of our user acquisition uh, strategy is working on free to play, uh, open secret that we have a partnership with Sharkline, where we. Um, when we launched in the New Jersey Devils contract and um, we knew our logos all over the place through the broadcast feed, also outside from New Jersey, we thought like, okay, let's put a free to play in place and start collecting the data because um, we are working on getting online. Um, we're an online only brand, I should say. We are looking to get into the market in, every mar in, in the US and every market that allows online sports betting and or iGaming, and it can not harm to start building that user base right from the beginning. So um, we see that kind of like um, being a piece of our strategy. And then I said local spend, obviously. Overall, I would say our strategy is so different from most of the op bigger operators in the US. And that's for many reasons. One reason is uh, we are the new kid on the block. So we start into the market with no database um, in comparison to the fantasy operators that have been in the market for a long time. We have a bit database of obviously through our market access partners, like in Colorado, we work with Bull Durham, we're using their database. But it's all kind of like um, at the starting point, I would say, at the stage. So we are looking to the for the best way to acquire users. And um, we want to be smart about how we do it. We are not in a position and we don't want to spend like 850 50 million a year um, right. and just throw the money out there. We are looking to be profitable one day in the US. Not immediately, it would be naive to think we come in and we make money right away. But the strategy right. is to be profitable over time. We are a profitable business in Australia, which is a great um, difference to many brands out there. It's a very competitive market as well, uh, where we comparable with the US market. And um, here in the US, um, we are basically coming in as a premium brand. We target the mid to high end customer base. Um, yeah. And we do that by offering bigger bets. So our strategy is um, and that's our slogan, your best bet. Our strategy is to come in with the best offering, the best odds, and we want our affiliates basically help us getting that message across the market. And um, we can only do that because we have our own risk and trading team that's been trading US sports for a long time. Funny enough, Australians love US sports. And uh, so we're kind of like experienced in doing that uh, for a long time. And we thought, okay, we will utilize that experience in the US. And um, we are in process of getting there. It's nothing that we do um, from day one. 
but we are in process of improving our odds step by step to become the most competitive um, operator when it comes to um, to the pricing, to the odds making at the end of the day. Um, because if you bet like three or five dollars, the odds don't really matter to you. But if you bet like hundred. $10,000, then it matters, right? So you're looking sure. to get the best deal in the market. And that's our strategy. We know that a lot of bigger operators, they are reluctant on taking on those big bets. And that's why we feel yes. like we have a niche in the market where we will find our place. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned uh, this this word I'm unfamiliar with, uh, profitability. Is that is that happening in in America? Uh, it's a rhetorical <laughs> question. Uh, listen, uh, uh, yeah, thanks, thanks. I, I, and you brought up some really interesting points. Um, you, you brought up uh, differentiation. Uh, you know, running uh, all the operators are are running different races. Uh, you know, if if you if you're trying to compete, uh, you know. If you're trying to compete on spend, you're probably not going to win. Um, and and I think that um, I, I think that we're we're seeing some some pretty large, you know, FanDuel, DraftKings spent half a billion dollars last year, um, you know, and, and that's only going to go only going to go up. Um, and, but, but you also and don't of, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> and don't get no, me no, wrong. No, no. I'm very thankful for them to spend that money because they help <laughs> educating the market, right? Oh. So we have a lot of people in the US that have not had any exposure to sports betting before. So they're doing basically the groundwork for us. So we have, we're have we very thankful for them educating everyone, uh, lobbying yes. for sports betting to get legalized in all the states. We're looking yes. for legalized sports betting in Florida and um, Texas, uh, New York, obviously and uh, all the bigger markets and uh, they basically take care of that and once the market's legalized um, we benefit from that so I'm I think that's yeah. great that that's happening and um, it helps also kind of like removing the last little bit of stigma that uh, comes with sports betting in the US just because it has been historically been something that was prohibited yeah and and you and you bring up a good point about players and and education levels uh acclimating that lots of sports fans in america pr probably you know you know are 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 inclined to possibly place a bet but but maybe are a little intimidated by that and certainly that education level um you know we're seeing on a on a free to play perspective you know adam how how are you seeing maybe just some of the differences of of some of the players that that you're seeing come in um you know, in the various states that that you operate in, and and maybe even just you know share some of your your the differences maybe that you're seeing from on an international level. You know, American American sports betters versus others. Just just talk about us. Talk to us about a little bit about that. Yeah, definitely. I think there's kind of you know there's three types of customers um, in a way at a broad level that we we kind of talk to. One is um, you know the new sports better, the sports fan who. Is kind of curious or interested in finding out about you know placing their first first bet and what that could look like and they obviously got challenges around and trust. You know, Lala mentioned a few of those things. Is it is this legal? Am I allowed to do it? Um, you know, um, and what's the stigma around that? So it's really important to break that down. We've got customers who have, have been betting um, already, maybe in in markets that haven't been legal, and and how do we actually get those those um, those guys to start? You know, betting in legal and regulated markets and what are the things we need to do to unlock that with them and then you've got the fantasy players as well you know people who have been using their their skill their knowledge of the sport their passion and and been playing you know with mostly FanDuel and DraftKings for a number of years but how do we get them to start using that that knowledge and analytics and um, approach to numbers to you know place along legal sports betting and, and maybe try some brands away from, you know, the fan jewels and, and DraftKings that they're, they're comfortable with because they've been using them in, you know, a bit of different games for a number of a number of years. So um, there's a few challenges in that. And I think what that opens up for affiliates and for media brands is really to work deeper with each of the operators to find the right customer for each of them. And Lala brought up some really interesting points around the customers they're going for. You know, we need to be, we need to make sure that, you know, on our platform, the play up is getting, you know, the clear air and in the spaces that are important to them um, and that we can drive the right customer you know, to, to be acquired firstly, but, you know, secondly, to, to retain them and to re-engage them. And um, sometimes we, we falsely think about affiliates as just about acquisition. Um, where there's probably a bigger role for them or for us and for media companies to play 
in you know, retention rate engagement. Yeah, that's a that's an interesting point. I think we're probably at that stage in America where, you know, we're we're, we're finding that operators have a large pool of of people that have signed up. Maybe they haven't deposited yet, so there's a there's a target market, you know, to to get them over that line on the deposit side. But then also maybe they come in, you know, deposit one, maybe deposit two, and 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 you know how do you how do you kind of progress them down that 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 player yeah. journey for the for the operators? That's think- a great point, Adam. Everyone's going to have their main wallet or wallets to a degree, but you know to try and find you know different offers or, or um, different bet types or experiences that they can they can enjoy across multiple sure. operators um, is you know part of our job. Yeah, right on, right on. So so uh, interesting uh, recap on 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 where you know some of the, the lessons that we've all learned, uh, you, you know over the past three years. Let, let's look forward um, and and unlike. Uh, last year, uh, we only—I think—we only found out that American football season was going to kick off in, in maybe mid-July, something along those lines. Uh, not a lot of prep time, uh, but 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 right now, I know that all the operators in America are are looking at. Uh, you know, August 5th is the beginning of, of NFL preseason, uh, you know, college football in, in states where, you know, there are places, there are states in, in, in the U.S. where college football wagering is, is, is more than pro football wagering. Um, and, and so when we look forward and, and now, now everybody's got a, a good amount of time to plan for football season, June is, is pretty much their, their, their opportunity to get their, their launch plans correct and, and, their, and, their, and their football season plans in, in place. Um, you know, how are, how are you approaching that, Layla? And, and maybe, you know, just let's just uh, provide a little bit of color. Um, you know, to, to maybe the importance that you place on that on that football season. And, and Adam, you know, I'm coming to you right after this. Yeah, I would say it's a, probably the second uh, most important event apart from March Madness in the U.S. Um, right. So we are preparing in New Jersey, obviously, to go live before that. And um, we have the Devils Lounge, so we're very happy that all the restrictions seem to be gone by then and people are allowed to go into the arena in full capacity again. So we will have street teams in our play-up lounge. Um, so basically everyone that gets into the arena has to come by um, and we will have our representatives standing there helping people to download the app and advising and ha- yeah, just educating them on how to do that. Um, so that's that's one piece of our strategy for New Jersey. And then obviously we are looking to launch I1 Indiana very soon. So we're targeting football season and um, Overall, t- we use that uh, downtime now basically to improve what's out there and just um, expand our affiliate network, getting the right deals and partnerships in place. Right. And um, maybe, yeah. maybe one thing I would say, as you touched on learnings, I think what we see, and Adam touched on that, made actually a very good point. I think in the US, everyone is focused on acquisition and not many are focused on retention. So part of our strategy is to retain the customer instead of going out and keep keep giving bonuses away and uh, to acquire new customers, much better to reward customers that you have already. And I think that's something we will see improving in the US over time. Yeah, you you bring up a good point. Uh, if, if you if you do a quick, uh, you know, last 12 months of the bonus, uh, you know, the states that track bonus money, um, Colorado and and Pennsylvania, you can you can see how much is being bonus to the to the players. You do see some interesting peaks, uh, you know, come September, August, September, um, you know, around, you know, people that are are heavily uh, engaged with 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 customer acquisition, and 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 once you get them, it's it's really important for you to be able to convert them and, and keep them. That's that's fair point. Adam, what are some of the ways that you all are approaching the the upcoming football season? Yeah, firstly, can't wait. Uh, we we just launched Diamonds just before last last football season um, with a well very um, I guess a very early stage MVP. So we've been able to build our product and offering our database and our communities over that time. So we're really looking forward to be able to, to tap into that. And I think. You know, seeing crowds back at games and greater capacity in sports bars and um, you know, it's going to see increases on TV viewership and engagement. 
it's going to be it's going to be wild. So, um, firstly, really excited about that. Um, you know, the things that we're going to focus on um, for us, um, and and I guess from you know some takeaways, I guess for some affiliates is I guess is you know that segmentation piece. You can't be everything to everybody. So for us, we need to find ways that we can um, deliver unique football content um, and unique football betting content that can get some cut through and and play a role in in the customers betting journey so we're focusing on some things there that um we've we've tested and we believe will be important for us um finding the balance between kind of long-lived educational content and short snackable digestible content bringing people back every day and they're things we want to keep focusing on as well um increasing our personalized content to fans as well we've built a, a customer data platform to understand their behaviors um, what content they want to consume and we want to make sure that they're getting the content they want whether it's their team their player their bet type um, and then pairing that up with the right offer from our partners um, around that and then um, and growing um, and servicing i guess our community and the community is really core to what we're trying to do with our brands um, so finding ways to engage them, reward them for being part of our community and what role can our operator partners play in that as well? Yeah, yeah, you, you, yeah, you, man, you, you touched on a bunch of points that, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's about that community. It's about that localization. It's, you know, you know if, if, if people are interested in the Cincinnati Bengals um, with the utmost respect to, to, to information about the San Francisco 49ers, they don't care. They just they just want yeah. to find out. Okay. And and if if their if their favorite quarterback, you know, is, is Baker Mayfield out of the Cleveland Browns, well, you know, talking to them about other quarterbacks probably not so important. So, you know, it's it's really about um, you know, finding that that localized and sometimes that that personalized uh, information. I, I just before we go, uh so so we've just got a couple of minutes. I just want to talk a bit about um, you know, we've got football season coming up and and sports betting is is a bit of the rage. I just want to get your thoughts about um, online, you know, online casino, online poker. Um, you know, if I look at the Michigan, you know, the Michigan launch here recently in, in, in January was a really interesting case study uh, launching both iGaming and, and sports betting. Um, and, and here we are after April's numbers, uh, you know, uh, online casino is 4X, what, what sports betting GGR is. Uh, all the GGR in sports betting is actually just being pushed back to, to customers. Just just take me through, you know, Layla, how are you approaching the, the you know, the, your funnel and, and, and the monetization of customers? You know, either whether that's, you know, DFS, horse racing, sports betting, but it feels like everybody is really just kind of gearing it towards towards iGaming and, and and Adam I'm going to come you know touch on, on on that with you as well Layla yeah so we um, secured a lot of market access on the iGaming side as well just because um, sports is kind of like limited on when it takes place um, you cannot offer sports betting without sports being just on right so casino basically online casino is um, a 24 7 coverage that you can really offer your customer we all know that sports betting is a very low margin business the margins in i casinos are much much higher than that the revenue expectations are much higher than that um and then also um the market is not too established um uh, while many if you look into the sports betting numbers you have a few major players that basically own the majority of the market it looks differently at casino so sure. I think there's more movement to disrupt the current environment. And um, that's why we focus on that. So our approach is basically having one app in the US where you have sports betting and you have iGaming through the same app, same wallet. It's a traveling wallet, so you download it one time and then you use it in every state where we're live. Excellent. And then we add horse racing to it, which is actually another great product. I'm not sure if... Um, you guys are following but fix us horse racing just is, is just about to get legalized in new jersey corrado is looking legalizing that as well we have uh tremendous experiences in australia on the fix us horse racing side and we can't wait to bring that to the us and start working on that in the us with dennis strays and obviously um who repeated passban who's um leading those efforts in New Jersey, being on our board, we couldn't be better positioned and more excited about getting that done as well. Awesome. Adam, real quick, man. 
What are your I'll thoughts be very on, quick. On I think you guys nailed it when we talk about casino. Um, our focus on yeah. the moment is, is definitely sports betting, but secondly, fixed odds horse racing. We've seen what fixed odds racing has done for you know the Australian market of racing. It's really opened it up to a new a new uh, customer base, and it's something we'll be focusing on um, in the US as well. It really excites us. Awesome. Well, listen, I, I really appreciate uh, yeah, everybody who is who's listening. Uh, certainly appreciate I, I Gaming Next uh, for giving us the opportunity to share, you know, some insights on on the U.S. market. Really interesting market, uh, you, you know. And 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 as we mentioned earlier, it's the it's the really the the first quarter. Um, thank you, Layla. Uh, thank you, Adam. Uh, friends friends of mine, um, and and I appreciate your time and, and and giving us your insight. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks for no, having thank me. Thank you, Dan. Uh, had a, had a great All time. Right. Thank you. Take care, everyone.